What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power of Play with CJ. to want to focus in on the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets season preview and what to expect from the Jackets and, uh, in 2015-2016. You know, they went out made that big acquisition in land and Brandon Saad. And, uh, you know, after having a historically unprecedented run of bad luck with regards to injuries, um, you know, they're ready to go back to the playoffs after Guy Grove thought they should have been a breakout team last year. But, you know, those injuries are going to happen. And, uh, you know, they came through it strong and you know they're ready to go back at it and you know they've got plenty of reason for optimism both in the short term and the long term and they have a very good hockey team right now and their prospect pool is amazing I mean, you look at guys like Zach Wierenski, uh Sonny Milano you know really talented guys for the U.S. development team in addition you know Paul Bittner you know guys like that, that that have really a lot of upside and you know what can take the time to develop because again the Jackets are have as good of a team as they've had in their in their history you know, you look at Nick Foligno having a breakout year last year um, at the age of 20, 27, 28, doing that. Ryan Johansson, you know, continuing his stellar play after getting that contract extension. I mean, for as much of a, you know, circus sideshow as that was, uh, deal got done. You know, he showed that he is a legitimate, you know, center in the league. Uh, you know, Boone Jenner, I love his game. You all know that. Cam Mackens and BC's finest, really, you know, coming on strong. And, you know, even... After losing Nathan Horton for the year, possibly for his career, you know, as bad as David Clarkson's contract is, it's just well, pretty much the same as, as Horton's, and you're getting him, he's on the ice, so it's like, you know what, Clarkson on the fourth line, I know you're paying $5 million for fourth liner, but at the same time, it's like, it's not bad, you know, going out signing Gregory Campbell, I know, you know, the, the Boston fanboys are going to be, oh my god, he's so great, and all those advanced analytics people are going to be like, oh, he's, you know, the worst, bottom line, a little bit of, little bit of everything from, uh, from Subi. I think, again, he's going to help anchor that fourth line uh, much the same way he did when he came over to the Bruins um, in 2010. You know, just go in there and really give you a little bit of everything on that on that unit. Uh, he's going to score some goals. He's going to fight. He's going to give it to you every night. And, uh, you know, you look at the guy that, you know, two years ago breaks his leg, finishes his shift. You know, that's what you want in your locker room. That's what you want on the ice. And, uh, you know, he's going to go out and, you know, show the young, the young whippersnappers how it's done. That's a similar thing with Brandon Saad. I mean, you know, Saad was a nice bit piece on two different Stanley Cup championship teams in Chicago, but now that he's got his contract, you know, he's the man, he's the star trash, and what's he going to do? And, uh, you know, it's easy to, I don't want to say it's easy to produce. <laughs> it's never easy to produce in the NHL. But when you're going up against, you know, second and third tier defensemen every night, you know, because obviously the onus is on shutting down a Kane or a Taves or a Marion also. Uh, you're going to get openings, and you know, you're know you going to get time and space and exploit it. Sounds like a good job with that. Now that he's going to be asked to carry the load, you know, how is he going to respond? I think he's going to do fine. I think his game is just so simple that it translates. He does a little bit of everything. You know, put some offense on the board, you know, throw a big hit, make a play defensively. Uh, you know, he's one of my favorite players in the league to watch. And, uh, you know, I think playing with a guy like Ryan Johansson will take all the best of him. You know, he's going to have the puck on his stick a lot more. And, uh, you know, he's going to be asked to create. And I think having a guy like Johansson that can also create will make life a little easier for uh, for everyone. You know, the aforementioned youth movement, I look for Alex Weinberg to, to see a lot of time next year. Uh, Kirby Reichel will see some minutes as well. Um, I, th I think he's going to start the year in, in terms of, which, you know, really isn't. Or they're new affiliates in Cleveland now. Uh, you know, I, I think Reichel, Milano, guys like that will be, you know, in the AHL getting next seasoning. And I, I think you'll see Milano at some point next year, um, in addition to, you know, the aforementioned. I love using the word aforementioned. It makes me sound really, really smart. Um, and, you know, Brian Murray can stay healthy. The blue line is just, it's amazing. It's be really, really good. And, uh, you know, I, I think he can really elevate his game and showcase why he was the number two pick in the 2012 uh, NHL injury draft. You know, the, the injuries definitely slowed down his development. But when he's healthy, he can straight up play. And you want a guy like that in your blue line. So, again, a lot of question marks with this team. But I like what I'm seeing. Here. Like, I am I see this team in the playoffs for sure. And I think they're a team nobody wants to face. I mean, when you have a goalie like Bobrovsky, who when he's on his game, you know, is as good as anyone, um, you know, ver with – the uh, this depth in front of him is like okay, I, I see you, and uh, you know I just look for for productivity throughout the lineup. I mean, you know I was, I was kind of putting the lines together. I was looking at other what other websites have with hockey news has for lines, and you know Wenberg, Atkinson, and Calvert. One of the sites has the third line. That is a very 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 good third line. So you know if the the top six guys can can step up and the you know 
third and fourth lines can kind of do their thing. Uh, I think you know this is going to be a really great year in Columbus, and uh, you know they're going to take a team to the heights they haven't seen before. You know I think they'll win a playoff series next year. I really like what the team is building on, and uh, you know the ownership, front office, and uh, and coaching staff is really great at getting the best out of these players. Players buy in. You know, I think the fans of Columbus are underrated. Uh, they can really make home ice with that can and everything. It's a real tough place to play. And uh, their team, nobody's going to want to see in the playoffs because you know having this kind of depth, having that kind of goaltending, they're uh, they're not they're not going to be an easy out. So I think they're going to be a lot healthier than they were last year. Brandon side will fit in pretty well. And uh, you know you'll be hearing about this this team is you know on the cusp of greatness all year. Anyway. That's like an episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for episodes about the offseason and beyond. Later, guys.